Want to interact with us? Follow us on Twitter at the RCWR Show. Warning, the RCWR Show with Lee Sanders is intended for a mature audience only. The following is an Infinity One Productions presentation, keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive. Covering the latest in wrestling and beyond since 2011. You're listening to the RCWR Show. Now, your host, live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., as featured on WrestleMate.com and TNA Insider, Lee Sanders. Oh, yes, it is good to be back. Man, we haven't done a weekend edition in what? Feels like two weeks. You're checking out weekend edition of the RCWR show. Your host right here, the Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Azrael, Lee Sanders. Thank you so much for checking us out on February 15th, 2014, the day after Valentine's Day. I can only imagine the many couples that's out there. And ladies, I feel for you tremendously if you didn't get those roses and those chocolates because of that damn snowstorm. But hopefully, hopefully us guys We're able to redeem ourselves in a very, very huge way. I do hope your Valentine's Day, fellas, ladies, it had went pretty good. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. As I said, I've been pumped up for this pretty much all week. Our guest, you can catch him every single week on Ohio Valley Wrestling TV, streaming at ovwrestling.com, Blip TV. You can also check it out on Louisville TV, Saturdays, Sundays, Wednesdays. Just check your local listings, man. They even air in London. You know, what better way to set this guy up than just really say he has got to be one of my favorite highlights from checking out OVW um, as we've been checking out the promotion. What's that like since last month? And he's definitely one of a few highlights for me when I check out the OVW promotion. And it's a great honor that we welcome him on the show for the very first time. Wrestling slash manager sensational, the one and only Timmy Danger. Tim, how you doing, buddy? Hey, how you doing, man? What's going on? Hey, pretty good, man. How's your weekend, man? It's good, man. It's good. Did you get snow? Uh, it's real icy out, man. Like, uh... A little icy out here in Louisville. Yeah, we got it bad up here. We got like about 15 to 18 inches over here. And we got folks over here that's still shoveling. It's ridiculous over here. That's rough, man. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous, man. Well, hope your weekend's going off to a good start. Thank you so much for coming by the show here. It means a lot. Um, I want to begin this by asking you, as I thought this was very, very interesting, is your close ties here to the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area as you were trained at the Ground Zero Wrestling School out in Richmond, Virginia. Can you share with the folks your experience at that school, what it was like and all? Because I know we have a few listeners that actually train at a few schools in our surrounding areas, but they may not be familiar with that school. Uh, GXW, man, it's, uh, operates out of Richmond, Virginia. It's been around for a couple of years now. It's run by a guy named Dave McLeod. Him and uh, the Pharaoh run the school. Uh, it's out in kind of like the eastern part of Richmond by the airport. I don't know how familiar with that. But, yeah, I started back there in, uh, around 05, 06. Uh, definitely a good place to go if you're starting out, man. You know, that's a good thing to say about them. Uh, I was there for a long time, man. They they broke me in, you know. So wouldn't be where I am now without them. So they're, they're good dudes. They're, they still run shows uh, at least once a month, I think. But, yeah, I was there for a long time, man. Good crop of guys, man. Uh yeah, yep. Um, the website is gogxw.com. It's where I broke in, man, out in uh, Richmond, Virginia. In Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, I see. Last I checked in on them, looks like they got an event that's going to be coming up uh, February 22nd. I know you had did something with them a couple of years ago, I think 2011. Did you do anything with them since then? Uh, no, I haven't done anything with them since then. Since then? Okay, okay. And, uh, beautiful Louisville, Kentucky since then, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, speaking of GXW, we actually had a question that came in to us from one of your fans, Tim, via ags.fm. And remember, if you guys have a question you want us to ask Tim, hit us up there, ags.fm forward slash the RCWR show or on Twitter at the RCWR show. Tim, this question comes from Robert, who says, and direct quote, been a fan of yours since you were in GXW, but now that you are in OVW, what do you think was your biggest moment in GXW looking back? My biggest moment in GXW looking back, what is, uh, 
it was a lot of it, man. I was there for forever, man. Like, you know, uh, like I said, I was there from, what, the 06 to 2011. So that's, that's a long time to be somewhere, you know. Of course, I worked other places as well. I uh, spent some time up in WXW in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Went all over the place, man. But uh, I'd say probably my biggest moment in GXW, this may sound kind of corny, but my last match there back in, uh, say, March 2012, a send-off match, me and the Pharaoh had our, our, our final match for a tag team that night, getting the victory, you know. It's a good way to go out for me, you know. One of the ones you never forget. But there were just so many, you know. So many good and bad ones, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so many, uh, so much calamity in the, uh, in the, in the pro wrestling world, you know. But that, to me, stands out a lot. Uh, like I said, I was a big part of the training school, too. We had a, a colorful cast of characters come to that training school as well, so. In OVW, you and the rest of the roster, you guys have like a wealth of knowledge and experience accessible through Rip Rogers, Danny Davis, Al Snow. Tell me, man, what is it like working with them and how beneficial have they been to your career so far? Oh, man, it's been phenomenal, man. Danny Danny Davis is a genius, man. Uh, Al Snow, it's been a complete honor to work with Al Snow. Uh, I owe a lot to Al. I look up to Al a lot, man. He's guy gave me a chance, you know. Um, gave me a chance, gave me an opportunity. It's all I, all I asked for. You know, learn from those guys. It's phenomenal. Rip Rogers. Uh, I honestly, uh, this may be a bias, but I feel like there's no better trainer in professional wrestling than the hustler Rip Rogers. Uh, I don't know if you ever met the guy or seen videos. The guy is he's something else, man. <laughs> but uh, learning from those guys, it's just it's a whole other level. You know, they're just they're so good at what they do. They're so intelligent at when it comes to professional wrestling that. Learning from those guys has been just a tremendous, oppor- a tremendous experience, tremendous opportunity. And you know, like I said, um, with Al-, Al Snow, like I said, Al- gave me an opportunity, gave me a chance, and just to sit down with Al Snow and sit down with Danny Davis and Rip Rogers, it's just there's nothing like it. You know, they're just three guys. Like I said earlier, know what they're talking about, and I, I think I really credit them for taking my game to the next level. You've had experience now as a wrestler and a manager so far. As on the manager side, you've worked with Eddie Diamond, James Thomas, and you're currently working with Marcus Anthony. I'm curious, what do you feel has been the pros and cons of being a wrestler and a manager? The pros and cons? Well, definitely, a lot of people ask me, they're like, a lot of young managers and guys who want to break into the business ask me, what's the best thing to do? And I always tell them, go to wrestling school. You know, learn how to be a wrestler, learn how to take the moves, learn how to the in-ring style, you know, because, like I said, that, that's the best way to be a manager. The pros and cons, you know, obviously the pros of being a manager is you're not getting beat up as much. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the biggest pro, brother. You're not getting slammed around as much. Uh, the con is, I mean, there really is no content, man. I mean, the, the biggest pro of being a manager is, is just going out there and, and not getting beat up. He's still a big part of the show. I'd say, uh, as far as wrestling goes, I mean, hey, I mean, I don't want to see any to it, man. I think that the biggest pros are, as a wrestler, you're in the, you're more in the spotlight than as a manager. That's probably the biggest pro to being a wrestler. Now, see, I would have thought it would have been the other way around, but very interesting, very interesting. Okay, all right, let's follow that up now. Um, when looking at the clients you've represented, what do you think has been the differences and traits that you've been able to pick up from those you managed and how it's helped you overall as a manager? Okay, well, that's, a, that's a great question, man. Um, we want to start most recently with Marcus Anthony. I think his best trait, man, is me and Marcus are on the same page, 24 mm-hmm. seven. Me and Marcus I have two guys with the same goal, same objective. There's no, there's no difference in what we're thinking. We go right in there, do what we got to do. Marcus, you know, he listens to me, I listen to him, we're a team, man. That's, the, that's one of the best traits about Marcus. You know, uh, Eddie Diamond, you know, I've known Eddie a long time. He had to go way back, you know, but I think uh, the best trait about Eddie was, you know, he, you know, he, Eddie's phenomenal in the ring. I know you watch OVW, I know a lot of people listen to watch OVW. Oh, Eddie Diamond is, is a phenomenal in-ring competitor, you know, but some of the bad traits about him is, you know, I don't think you're as ready for the big times, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but um, and you got Moose Thomas, you know, and, and, and Moose, you know, it's unfortunate that you know he went his ways, but Moose really showed me and taught me what it was like to go from where I was uh, about a year ago, a year ago to right now. You see know, you know what I mean? Moose was one of those guys really showing what it was like to be a main eventer and taught me how to handle myself and, and become the top guy. 
<laughs> I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Yeah, I mean, me, I'm like still new to the OV, uh, the OVW product, but from what I've been able to gather from the hardcore fans, it is that currently it kind of feels like the product is in a transitional period right now as over the years there's been somewhat of a revolving door with talent i'm sure it's helped tremendously with certain folks that's come through ovw and as a result the promotions got better exposure but to your knowledge your experience has it been more difficult once they've departed to keep the same level of enthusiasm for the fans and to keep them coming back I don't think so. I think, you know, it's like any any wrestling company is going to go through that. You know, any any business is going to go through changes. And mm-hmm. I don't think this business, OVW, or any pro wrestling company, whether it be WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, whatever, is any different. I think right now the transition is going on. I do think it's good for the fans because it's a little different than it's been for the past couple of years. And mm-hmm. I think that's good for the fans because, you know, they get to see a lot, of, a lot more talent that maybe before didn't get that opportunity. Right, yeah, like good example, uh, Jay Bradley. We recently had him on the show, and I know many folks. I'm definitely at the top of the list. We were like heartbroken to find out that he wrapped everything up at the last Saturday Night Special. We're like, no, but hey, look on the bright side. We got you. We got Marcus Anthony. That guy's a freaking beast, by the way. Uh, Jamin Olavencia, and you can't, you can't dog Ryan Howe. I mean, the guy comes out and he plays guitar as he makes his way to the ring. I mean, that's just insanely good. Yeah, man. Well, like I said, but with, uh, like I said, with guys like Jay leaving and guys of that nature leaving, it does open the door for a lot of new talent. There's a lot mm-hmm. of new talent coming over OVW right now uh, that start off in the beginner's class and guys who have kind of migrated over here. I think they'll get a good chance to shine. And it yeah, also will... Yeah give a lot of guys some of the opportunities to be main eventers and, and move up on the car that maybe they wouldn't have had before, maybe two, three months ago. And as I mentioned, it is a promotion that we try to do our best to cover weekly. I think we just began covering it last month, and I've definitely been enjoying the product so far. We always try to expand our horizons and the listeners, as I always tell our listeners, to try not to limit themselves to just checking out one promotion because – that's not really truly being a wrestling fan. I don't know how you feel about that, but my mentality is always check out as many promotions as you can. Yeah, man. You know, and for those listening, for those that's awesome, man. Exactly, exactly. Now, for those listening that still haven't checked out OVW, Tim, you're there every single week. Tell them why they need to check it out. I think OVW offers something a lot different than any other promotion does. I think, you know, uh, a big part of OVW is they see a lot of the guys I mean, the banner says tomorrow superstars today, and that's really true with OVW. A lot of guys, you know, came through there that are top names in the business now. CM Punk, John Cena, and a lot of the guys at OVW right now has the potential ability to be top guys in the business. And that's, I think, one of the big drawing factors of OVW. I think we have some of the best talent in the world, too. You know, I'll give the devil to do, man. Jim and Olavincia, one of the top talents anywhere. Uh, you know, guys like Eddie Diamond, like I said, top talent, you know, uh, guys from coming around like Marcus Anthony, heavyweight champion, my guy, you know, no one, no, there's nobody out there like him. I think that's one of the selling points is just some great talent there that, you know, and right now it's kind of, you know, it's a lot different of a product right now. It's a little, a little bit of a throwback product right now. So a little, little slower matches and something that you can't see anywhere else. You got that right. Yeah, great, great matches. Never a disappointment every time I tune in. Some, some top-notch uh, good matches. Um, I want to pick your brain for a little bit as far as the manager side goes. For me as a kid growing up, one of the main things that I fell in love with was the managers that would come out with the wrestlers. We had the Bobby the Brain Heenans for the Mr. Perfects or the King Kong Bundys, the Jim Cornettes, Midnight Express, Paul Heyman, just phenomenal work by those guys. Now, currently... We know you're doing your thing in OVW. Over in WWE, we got Paul Heyman, Zeb Coulter, Lana. There's no managers to be found in TNA Wrestling right now. Uh, me and a good friend of mine that has close ties to the biz, as uh, he's a performer, he's noticed, or we both noticed, over the years, it seems like managers have become a dying breed. My question to you, it's a two-parter. How do you think it got to this point, and do you see it making a serious comeback like it was in the 70s, 80s? Bro, man, like, I get asked this question a lot. And I think yeah. that, like, anything in the business, anything in any business, man, just in, in the world itself, things go through cycles. 
you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember, like, you know, like, and anything, even the food, like, for a while, Crystal Pepsi was hot, you know, at one point, you know, Surge, you know, oh. just things, just, they come and go. Uh, and but sometimes they come back. And I think with managers, you know, I think the term manager is kind of outdated and obsolete. I think when you say someone's a manager, they kind of get that old school vibe of like the grand wizard, you know, but, and that kind of is a throwback, but he called something else in a lot of ways. Like Ricardo Rodriguez, he was a manager, but they called him a personal ring announcer, you know. I think uh, Rockstar Spud, he's basically a manager right now, and TNA or manager wrestler, and he's called uh, chief of staff. And I think they just kind of, they still do it, they just put a different spin on it. I think in the recent years, you know, it's definitely made a big comeback with guys like Paul Heyman, Ricardo, uh, Biggie Guerrero, and guys like that, Truth Martini, Trignana, guys like that have really, I don't say they brought it back, but they, they've really made it shine in the way that it hasn't in the past. I've never looked at it that way before. That's a very good point. You're, you're spot on right there. I heard from a birdie that for you, it would be really awesome to see an action figure version of yourself made. And uh, as folks know from our live web shows, I'm a huge action figure collector. It's so bad, dude, that I'm starting to run out of room. And like in my house, there's me. And then there's my girlfriend who's obsessed with anything Tweety related. So we make a really great pair. (laughs) You know, um, no, no, it hasn't gotten to that point yet. But we are kind of running out of room here. (laughs) Uh, tell me, how you picture? Next season, uh... I think we'll be there m- maybe in the next two seasons. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, next two seasons we'll probably be there. Um, tell me, how you picture in that figure of yourself, uh, attire wise, accessories, and all that? Because I thought that was kind of cool. Hey, brother, man, you uh, you collect the whole series. You get Timmy Danger in the wheelchair version. <laughs> That's the first one you want, mate. And I don't know, man. I mean, there's there's the mixtape Timmy Danger. There's 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 uh, Marcus Nappy Timmy Danger. There's there's wrestler Timmy Danger. There's a lot of them, man. But uh, I think uh, the best selling one right now would be new with the with the black hair and the beard going on, man. Uh, you can you can collect all six and make the wheelchair. <laughs> or they could do like that uh, that Marvel co- collection series from a couple of years back. I don't know if you remember this or, or if you collected it uh, like that. But there was this one Marvel series. I think it was by Hasbro. They gave you like uh, 8 to 12 figures that you had to collect. And each one of them had a limb for Galactus. And when you combined it all, it made like... That's exactly a, what you're talking about. Yeah, it was like a 20 freaking inch Galactus figure. And you're like, oh, you know... I had to go through 15 figures to get this, but it, it's worth it. And, and for those of you that think that's a little crazy, you should see how much the, the Galactus figure is worth on eBay just alone. I mean, you can get like, shoot, like $200 uh, off of it. I, I mean, it's a real steal. But yeah, yeah, they should do uh, you, you, They should do your line like that. You know, for every single Timmy Danger figure, you know, there's a, a, a piece that can make the, make the wheelchair. <laughs> Now, I got to ask you, man, because I, I know our boy, Jamin Olavencia, I, I know he's probably listening because I know he checks us out from time to time. And he probably would give me an earful if I didn't ask this. But, dude, what do you got against him? I mean, come on, man. Former longest OVW champion in the company's history until he met your client, Marcus Anthony. Some would call your constant interference not needed as it's making Anthony maybe come off as a paper champion. Come on now, what, what what what's going on? Some folks feel you you bailing him out a little too much. How you respond to that? Man, what to, I'm not. Who calls him a favorite champion? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> Look, honestly, I said, I'm gonna give the devil to do with Jamin. All right, man. Like the nicest thing I will say about Jamin Oliventi, I know this is being recorded. And the nicest thing I will say is Jamin has anyone has brought me to the dance. Anyone has brought me to the next level. It's been Jamin. Every time I've gone out there, Jamin, whether on the mic in the ring, whatever it is. The guy, I've left a little bit better. Mm. And that's one thing I will say. If there's anything nice I will say about Jamin Olivencia, every time I've left, left to Davis Arena or, or, or Reno Sports Student Center in E-Town, where it will be next Saturday, I've left just a little bit better. You know, and I, I've, I've, you know he's brought me to, where I, like I said, where I was from making mixtapes to the main event, to the heavyweight championship. So I will say that, but, you know, the guy, you know, he was on top for a long time. Someone's got to bring him down. That guy's got to be neat. 
<laughs> okay, okay, yeah, because I, I know James is going to be listening, so ho- hopefully he appreciate. Yeah. yeah, hopefully he appreciates that. Uh, Tim, we actually got a looks like the same question, but it, it's being shared by two different people, so we'll give both of them credit. Uh, Trey on Twitter and Titus Machiavelli, our old friend and uh, manager extraordinaire, Titus Machiavelli, they both are asking the same question. Do you agree, Tim, that now more than ever, managers are needed in pro wrestling? I know you said managers are in a different title, but do you agree with what they're saying right there? Oh, absolutely, man. I think I think there's a lot of guys out there who, you know, and it's not so much the mic skills, you know. I just think a lot of it is to complete the package. You see what I'm saying? Like, for example, I'll use Eddie Diamond as an example, you know. Uh, Eddie Diamond, you know, is a great talker, great all-around talent. But I think with me, Eddie, it just completed the package. You see? Okay. And I think that's what caused Eddie to get further in his career is having me along, and it completed the package, like the mixtape, for example. I don't think it would have been as successful if it was just Eddie or just me. With both of us together, it completed the package and took it further. I think that's an important part of wrestling is to have that guy to feed off of and to complete the package. But to you, it's more than just mic skills. Yeah, it's more than mic skills. It's just all around completing the package. And getting back to Ricardo Rodriguez, I mentioned earlier, you know, being the ring announcer, that helped complete Alberto Rio's package, in my opinion. I could be wrong. No, no, you're not. You're not, because I must admit, Alberto Del Rio... It wouldn't be the first time. No, you're right. Alberto Del Rio, he just really hasn't been the same since him and Ricardo have split. I, I will admit, he seemed more interesting with Ricardo at his side and helping him. You know, he kind of really gave a new dimension to his character, because now without him, Del Rio, despite being a great performer that he is, he just comes off so one-dimensional when he's talking and all that, whereas when you paired him up with Ricardo, it it just seemed like the combinations was endless as far as trying to get him over. Oh yeah, just, I think more so, I mean, a lot of people view a manager or or whatever, advisor or whatever, as someone to talk to for for somebody, you know, like maybe back in the day, Jimmy Hart spoke for King Kong Bundy and was like, you know, Jerry Lawler, you watch out because Bundy's coming to the Miss South Coliseum. Like, yeah, I don't think it's needed like that. I just think it's more so to complete the entire package. We hope that uh, answers your question there for you. So tell me, what you got coming up next? I know you got the Saturday night special. That's on March 1st, but I know there's some events happening a little bit before that. Can you share? Yeah, we said tomorrow night, uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling is going to be in Austin, Indiana. You can check out ovwrestling.com for uh, more information on that. That's the website to go. Also, the, if you haven't seen the show yet, all the TVs are on there. They post every Thursday night. The film is Wednesday. They go on there Thursday. Check that out. Uh, next Saturday, we'll be in uh, Elizabethtown, Kentucky, uh, which is about an hour away from Louisville. This will be the Von Reno Star Community Center. Always a great show there, man. Uh, wish you could come out, bro. Uh, always a good time there. Always a packed house. Uh, it's uh, going to be a good show. I know the Marauders are taking on Trailer Park Trash and Flash Flanagan and the Kendo Stick on a Paul match. I'll be there. Marcus will be there. Hopefully, Jam and Olavinci won't be there. Uh, <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> .com for more information on that. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So, like, once again, go to ovwrestling.com. All the episodes you can watch, they're streaming as of Thursdays. And uh, it's definitely how I kick off my weekend. I let that be no secret. I'm always checking out OVW. And, uh, Tim, uh, let the good folks know how they can stay in contact with you and all that. Find out on all the very latest and what you're up to. I should write down my Twitter address. It's really hard to, to find out. And remember, it's just at Timmy Danger. Uh, <laughs> took me a while to think of, but just at Jimmy Danger. Uh, my Facebook, uh, it's a very public Facebook. I, I have anybody, don't care. It's not personal at all. Uh, just t- Timmy Rampage Danger or Facebook.com backslash Timmy Danger. Uh, I got a very public email. If anyone wants to shoot me an email for bookings, whatever, just say what's up. Uh, it's the Timmy Danger at gmail.com. Awesome have you on the show, uh, as we always tell our guests. Anytime you want to come on back, man, whether it's to plug something or just talk about something random, we'd love to have you back. RCWR Show family member for life, man, so the door's always open for you to come on back. Thanks, man. Oh, no, no, thank you. We appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. You too, bro. All right, now. Bye.